Hi, everybody. My name is Pierluigi Pastor. I'm part of the R&D of our site. And today we will guide you through the uh, description of the capability of the QT framework on our embedded uh, forms. Let's start with the agenda. We will have a, a short company intro. <coughs> I'm sorry. We will uh, talk about uh, what is QT technology and uh, where are they involved. We'll talk about the hardware and software components that uh, will be used. We will talk about what uh, our site is able to provide you. And we will also um, explain how uh, all of the pieces will be connected to each other. Let's start with the company intro. I left my, the word to my colleague, uh, Hopper. Yes, thanks, uh, Pierre. So uh, my name is Hopper Austerlitz. I'm a VP of uh, Business Development and Sales at uh, Varisite. And uh, naturally, there are uh, quite a few companies that are providing uh, QT solutions. Uh, just wanted to give you a few teasers, you know, on Varisite and how we distinguish ourselves uh, compared to other some uh, vendors. I will not uh, waste uh, too much of uh, PS time, just a couple of slides here. So first of all, uh, Varisite today is the number one uh, ARM-based system and module vendor. We are selling uh, more than 1 million units uh, per year and we're uh, the number one leaders in this market with actually almost 18 years of uh, experience in, in the system and model, both uh, development and uh, production serving uh, over 5,000 customers uh, around the world. We have the most uh, diversified ARM-based uh, product portfolio with extensive longevity of uh, 10 to 15 years and uh, quite a few compliance uh, policies uh, listed here, a few of them including the ISO 13485 uh, for, for medical and uh, others. We were actually the only song vendor that was selected by uh, NXP as their uh, platinum uh, partner. And we're also alpha partner for the entire IMX8 uh, product line, starting from the 8X, uh, then 8M, 8M Mini, 8M Nano, the newest uh, edition uh, that is uh, currently coming, uh, 8M uh, Plus and 8 uh, Quad Max uh, as well. One of the biggest advantages of uh, Varisite, if you compare Varisite uh, to other system and model vendors, is the fact that we have our own internal production lines. That regards, we're actually providing the most uh, optimized cost performance configuration to each customer uh, for uh, an MOQ of 100 units we can actually optimize the configuration with a specific memory size, a storage, a temperature grade, a few other uh, additions that we can put inside like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth or Ethernet file or audio and the like. So uh, you can actually configure your own system on module and then we optimize the cost and performance, especially for uh, your needs. We, on top of uh, everything else, uh, when you're selecting a partner, we have the highest uh, customer uh, support quality that we provide around the system on module. Uh, Pierre and the team is uh, just uh, one uh, aspect of, uh, of uh, the support that you can uh, find around the system on module and the, the wiki pages that uh, we have with a lot of uh, details around and so on and so on uh, forth. Uh, Pierre, you can move to the next slide, please. Uh, this uh, slide showing uh, showing you the system uh, on module pin-to-pin -pin, uh, families that uh, we introduced, allowing our customers to scale up uh, very nicely between one uh, processor solution to, to another. Uh, looking at uh, the Parson pin-to-pin -pin family as an example, uh, if you look at the right side, you have the entry point based on the iMix. Uh, 6UL, 6ULL from NXP, that it is uh, quite, I would say, uh, base uh, CPU based on Cortex-A7. Still, it can very nicely support also QT and other interfaces. It doesn't have a video encode or decode, but it is very nicely positioned as, I would say, kind of uh, interface or let's say wide interface solution to, to the customer. Then you can scale up to the IMX6 uh, product line that we had before. Uh, single, dual, and quad-core of uh, IMX6, then the, the newest IMX8 M uh, Nano, the Mini, the 8X, and even the 8 uh, Quad Max, all of them are actually pin-to-pin -pin with some mooxing limitations, but you can design a carrier board that will support all of them. We are going to introduce, uh, I would say in a few weeks, uh, the IMX8 M Plus, 
with a lot of uh, additions to the ATEM family that you can also see in the dark pin to pin family that will allow you both to, to scale up on the Varsom and the dark pin to pin family from the previous uh, solutions that we have over there with uh, extra uh, machine learning engine with a few uh, interfaces that were not included before in the ATM like uh, the canvas and dual ethernet and a few more uh, display options. So uh, the, the bottom line here is that you can very nicely design a product that will be scalable from uh, one solution to the other, even uh, make it uh, compatible to future IMX9 that will come and the like, simply based on the Varsom or the dark pin to pin family that uh, you can uh, find from uh, various sites. Uh, Pierre, uh, I will uh, transfer uh, now the uh, presentation to you and you can take it from here. Thank you. Thank you, Hofer. Let's go on with the agenda now. Now we will go through the uh, definition of QT and uh, what uh, is involved too. Uh, first of all, I beg your pardon because actually the correct pronounce of uh, this framework is QT, but I'm so used to say QT that uh, you will uh, hear me just say QT. So just forgive me for this. By the way, uh, QT is a, a framework that is aiming to cover all of the development needs of an application without caring uh, too much about if the application is targeting a mobile device, the meta device, or a desktop. The main uh, equality of Qt is to be cross-platform. So you just write your code once and you deploy on several subsystems like Android, iOS, Linux, or, or whatever you want. Uh, this is the way Qt was designed for. Uh, so just have a kind of uh, uh, sub uh, layer that allow you to um, uh, use the same code on different platforms. This layer is actually known as Qt platform abstraction, always known as uh, QPA. Uh, what uh, is able to do this QPA? Basically, uh, abstract uh, the graphic interface so the, cast, the, the developer can just deal with the application without taking too much care of the uh, hardware layer that manages the graphics. Um, the, here I'm reporting, we are reporting uh, the most used uh, interfaces, so the standard Linux frame buffer, the non accelerated one, the accelerated frame buffer also known as EGLFS, the Wayland uh, from uh, backend, that is the one uh, used in the, le in the last um, uh, platform from uh, NXP, mainly all of the IMX8 family, families. The X11, that is the most used actually because it came from the Linux PC and has been used till now for all of the embedded devices that we're using also uh, the same infrastructure, but also Android, iOS, Windows, VNC. And uh, beyond this, let me add a couple of things. Uh, um, one of the um, uh, latest introduces the WebGL, that is actually the capability of the Qt framework to provide uh, a kind of local web server rendering the page for you. This can allow to accessly to, remote, uh, to remotely access the device uh, and having the rendering from uh, the application. And the application is not actually dealing with the web server. It's just rendering what the developer would like to uh, render from a graphical perspective. But uh, let's say that even if Qt uh, was born as a graphical interface, it along this uh, history is starting uh, adding uh, mm, more and more uh, libraries to his uh, framework. So you can find library for the Bluetooth, for the, for the network, NFC, positioning sensors, serial bus like the canvas. It's a, a very comprehensive and complete framework that allows the customer to uh, write his own application without dealing on external libraries. Qt can provide all you need. 
More than this, um, even if originally it was mainly oriented to the graphic, nowadays you have a dedicated QPA that allows you to do not have graphic at all. So in the bottom of the page, you can see that there is the off-screen QPA platform that allow uh, the, the, the application, as I say, to don't have at all any graphical uh, um, impact, let's say. What about the programming languages? Uh, originally, uh, Qt was mainly oriented to C, C++, because uh, uh, it was a framework that was born to uh, create widgets, and those widgets were mainly coded uh, in C and C++ with uh, a kind of uh, uh, set of libraries that to, where you, you were able to interface. Nowadays, beside the C, C++, we are seeing uh, an, an, um, more and more interest um, against what is called the QML, the Qt modeling language. This is a declarative language, like uh, the style sheet of the CSS in JSON, that uh, is used to describe your graphical interface. So the, the attention is in this, uh, uh, the target of this uh, approach is moving the attention from the code to describe the application to the graphic that describes the application. And this is uh, more crucial in uh, uh, the, the, the description of the user interface to give a better user experience while using the application. How this uh, can be described along the history of Qt? I said that uh, originally Qt was based on the widgets. The widgets are the basic, uh, um, the, the basic part of, a, of an application like button, uh, like uh, text areas and whatever that were described in the legacy approach um, with the C, C++ code. Nowadays, the, the technology has moved from widgets to Qt Quick. Qt Quick uses as language the QML. Uh, both the application can actually be used uh, to uh, develop a custom application but uh, the the process to produce the application is a bit uh, different nowadays the suggested approach is the qml just because it's uh, much more easy from a graphical perspective but uh, the qt widgets approach is still available and still uh, usable let's try to compare to compare these approaches uh, just to have a general understanding of, of uh, what's going on. So, the Qt widget technology was based uh, on C, C++ uh, coding and uh, is able to provide uh, Qt widgets uh, pieces that uh, are the basic um, parts for what is uh, generally referred to as a legacy GUI desktop application. Once you get this legacy GUI desktop application, uh, the, the developer can customize it till to obtain uh, the desired final result. When we talk about the Qt Quick technology based on QML, we still have C, C++ code, but just to manage the interface with the machine and the hardware itself. The QML focus on the description of the graphic. And once you use this technology, you directly get the final custom interface. The point is that uh, being a description of the graphic is not that easy sometimes uh, having a specific object like buttons, checkbox. So Qt provides also a set of dedica dedicated object libraries to introduce uh, these capabilities. Let's keep comparing these technologies. Uh, the Qt widget was mainly oriented to the graphical frame buffer. Nowadays, it is still in use and still maintained. So you can, in any case, provide uh, an application based on widgets. 
And uh, as I said, it's mainly oriented to C++ programming. Qt Quick technology instead uh, was mainly oriented to the accelerated frame buffers. So uh, the original version was only available on OpenGL platform. Nowadays, this is not really true. I mean, the, um, the Qt team provided a kind of rendering engine that is able to emulate the OpenGL and still allow the, the developer to use QML even on not accelerated platforms. The Qt version um, that allowed to use uh, um, QML is at least 5.1, 5.2 because it, 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 this is the very first uh, uh, version of Qt that was providing a ma mature uh, version of QML. As I said, the, the, the programming language is, is QML for the graphical interface and C++ for the other interface and uh, the, the, the extension that may be required. Now, let's try to see how a general application may appear when we use either the Qt widget or the Qt Quick technology. So, in the upper left corner, you can see a general Qt widget application as it came out from a preliminary design. Uh, in, this, uh, in this sense, you can see that uh, it's a kind of legacy application. It's not that nice, but uh, Qt allows to include the style sheet, custom widgets, modifying the styles in order to obtain your target graphic, that is the one in the lower right um, corner. So there is a process uh, that allows you to start from a descri descri description of the interface and then the customization that allows you to achieve the final result. This is the Qt widgets technology approach. The QML approach is slightly different. You start from a graphical design that is described somehow through the QML, and then you can add custom widgets that are not uh, that easy to be described. So the initial result is uh, directly the, what uh, a graphical designer can provide you. There, are, there is the capability to introduce uh, using uh, uh, PowerShot screenshot uh, um, rather than other uh, graphical uh, tools and uh, have this uh, output to be integrated directly in the Qt in order to generate your application. This is a, a very powerful uh, uh, approach because uh, you can split completely the graphical design and the uh, uh, other interface uh, design just because uh, the QML only manage the graphic and the C++ all only manage the interactions. Just to have uh, a, a couple of reference examples, we, on uh, our GitHub, you will find at, in the addresses URL reported here, two different uh, uh, examples that uh, may be used to reference the two technologies. On one side, the GPIO widgets that allow you to play with the GPIO uh, using the widgets. And on the other side, the same application, but designed from a QML perspective. So the graphical is uh, designed through the QML and the interaction with GPIO in C++. Uh, C++. One of the common question that we have is, uh, but uh, am I supposed to switch immediately to QML or I can still use Qt widgets? Um, we, we, at the time being, we are not aware of any plan from a Qt uh, to, um, let's say, um, stop supporting the Qt widgets technology. So, uh, we are supposed to develop today an Qt widget uh, application and we are supposed to have them working, uh, maybe we've done some adjustment, also in the 
a future version of Qt. Uh, the suggested approach, but just because uh, uh, it's a matter of um, um, approach from a graphical perspective, is the QML. Uh, let's say that the QML has been thought mainly to uh, satisfy the graphical request that they may come from uh, uh, the marketings because it will uh, uh, make easy describe the, the application from a graphical perspective. This is why uh, the QML is the suggested approach because it's supposed to be the long-term uh, uh, solution for the newer project. And uh, one of the common questions that we also have is, okay, but I'm not used with QML, I'm used to C, C++, uh, how, how can I do? How long it will take to me to reach a, a, a reasonable level of confidentiality with this, uh, um, uh, with this technology? It, let's say that uh, QML is a descriptive language and the learning curve is, uh, um, the, depend on the developer, but uh, it's not that critical. Uh, let's say that once you get in and you understand the capability, you will probably prefer QML to the Qt widgets approach. But in any case, uh, you will have from the Qt team a, a kind of GUI designer that will allow you, will help you to use the QML more or less like the Qt Quick approach, uh, the Qt Widgets approach. It's a dedicated tool that is part of the Qt Creator uh, um, framework and will uh, help you during the design of the, of, the, of the application. Just to give you a reference, here you can see on the left the Qt Widget Designer and uh, this is the phase where we were preparing our demos, the one that we shown before. On the right, you can see something similar about the QML. Let's say that uh, it's not that easy, but uh, the Q, uh, Qt provide all of the documentation and the reference and the tutorial to approach uh, those technologies. Now that we have a general understanding, uh, let's try to uh, understand which hardware and software components are involved. First of all, the basic uh, part is Qt Creator. Qt Creator is a, a, an, uh, an ID, an integrated developer environment provided by Qt team. It's a very performant and uh, interesting tool that provide you the capability to run application, debug application, have different settings for each specific hardware you have. You may have a board with the uh, with a GPU and another board with a, without a, a, a GPU and have different settings for each of these board and run your application according to this setting. When I say uh, um, running the application, I'm referring to the same code, just running in different conditions. Uh, so basically, uh, Qt is a, a powerful instrument for the developer to um, start from the design of the application till to the debug and the deploy, because this will interface also the target and will deploy the software on the target and you will the bug on the target, just with an Ethernet cable. Now, just to uh, focus on the, the Qt product, we also need to talk about quickly, actually, about the licensing system. You can find uh, several information about Qt licenses to the links that we propose here and also uh, in the frequently asked question on uh, the Qt website. But basically, what you need to know is there is a commercial license that uh, will require you to pay a fee to uh, Qt according to um, the number of pieces and whatever, but you need to agree directly with Qt. And there is an open source license that is 
uh, based on LGPLv3. Uh, keep in mind that LGPLv3 is not that um, uh, easy to be used in uh, a general uh, in a general approach to a product that want that should be um, uh, present on the market because basically LGPLv3 will say that uh, the product should be some kind of an open product where the cast the the final user is able to uh, access the details of the product in terms of file system libraries and whatever you will find several in information about this just keep in mind that these are the two approaches provided by qt about the licensing system uh, going forward uh, we are going to see what Versite provide to you. We start from the, the other. We provide you a song. We provide you an evaluation kit. We provide you uh, a file system and the capability to build your own SDK, your own to chain with the cross compiler and the back tools QT Creator, you will be able to download it from uh, the QT website and the QT framework will be part of the SDK that you will be able to build. Uh, what is happening is that you will just plug uh, your uh, evaluation kit to the network and uh, to the PC for a serial console and you will be able to start uh, developing, uh, cross-compiling, deploying, testing uh, your application. How, how this will be happen? Uh, let's talk about the, the involved pieces in this process. First of all, we start from the wiki. Uh, this is a generic wiki page. Uh, we, we are not referring to a specific uh, uh, SOM, but uh, this is how in general uh, uh, um, appear a generic wiki page for one of the IMX8 uh, uh, family product. So you will find uh, the Yocto SDK, the Yocto BSPs, the Android, the Debian, the Boot QT, and the FreeRTOS. Let me uh, focus for a while on the Boot QT. Boot QT is a, a Yocto distribution mainly managed by the QT team. Which is the difference between Yocto and Boot QT? Basically, is that uh, using the same Yocto release, I mean, uh, let's uh, point to, on Yocto Sumo. Uh, if you build a QT for Yocto Sumo and you, if you build Boot to QT, the QT version that you will get in Boot to QT is usually two points uh, farther than the one in Sumo. So for Yocto Sumo, you will have QT 5.10. In Boot to QT, you will have 5.12. This is a general approach of the QT team, having a couple of revision. Uh, uh, newer revision in their uh, own distribution. Beside this, uh, BootQT uh, is based on Yocto and uh, mainly focus on uh, uh, the running of a specific Qt application. So everything is focused to Qt. While if you approach through Yocto, you will have a general approach that will uh, easily provide you the capability to add the pieces rather than uh, specific library or whatever. In BootQT, everything is focused on Qt. Uh, about Android and Debian, as I said, it is still possible to provide um, uh, Qt support for Yocto and Debian, as for Android and Debian, but keep in mind that we are uh, um, referring to systems that uh, uh, need special care. And for example, Debian does not provide a cross-compiler because you, Debian is thought to be the main machine, like a PC, and you can easily build uh, your Qt application if you think that uh, your Debian machine is a PC. Just use it as PC. About Android, you will go through the SDK, integrating Qt, but it's a, 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 you, need, you will need a special care. So for now, let's focus mainly on the Yocto approach. Uh, and uh, what you will do when uh, you build uh, the Yocto SDK is uh, going through the, uh, our wiki, follow the instruction. We do provide specific images like the Prescale uh, FSL image Qt5 
that you will be able to build and have a, a, a preliminary QT5 support. But beside this, you will also be able to build a dedicated SDK that will start from the, this image, add all of the QT support for the, um, the host PC that will, um, will, um, that will receive the SDK itself. So once you uh, start, you sorry, you will be able to generate the image. From the image will be available through a compressed file that you will be able to um, decompress and burn on an SD card. And uh, once you start the SD card, you will have a system up and running with all of the Qt library already available or at least what is planned to be already available. You can always add more library. And you will be able to connect uh, uh, this uh, board through uh, a serial console, but also through the Ethernet cable. On, this is for the target, also on the target board. On the host PC, you're supposed to install the SDK. And once you install the SDK, we have a dedicated uh, section in the wiki that uh, uh, drive you through the step-by-step uh, -step, uh, configuration of the sub-pieces. I mean, the configuration of the devices, the configuration of the debugger, the GCC compiler, the Z++ compiler, the CMake, the Qt version, and all of this previous configuration will be, let's say, covered by a kit configuration that will link each of them and will be your machine specific configuration. That's why previously I was referring to the capability to have different kits using, uh, uh, referring to different machine that will allow you to deploy the same code on different machine with different configuration. Just to give you a quick example of what we are talking about. Uh, here we will show you a quick video, actually a, a compressed video of the Qt uh, creator configuration, the kit configuration. Just remind that the extended version of the video will be available through this uh, link already present in the page. So let's now start the video. back. So as I say that this video is also available uh, through the uh, website uh, YouTube web channel. Uh, this is the Qt creator configuration. So the steps that we described a few minutes ago. The, the second step, once you have configured uh, 
the QT application is uh, starting with a kind of uh, QT application that uh, uh, um, may provide a minimal QT uh, reference example. Let me show you another video that uh, will show you how to uh, prepare a sample application. In order to test that everything is properly working on our system, let's create a new project clicking on New File Project. Then select as project type widget and assign it a name. Let's also select widget as base class. Now we have to choose the right kit to be used. Of course, we are going to select the one created during our previous activity and here we are ready to create our application. On the next step, we used to define a simple graphic interface, dragging in it some simple object like a button. We also set up the target window resolution, in this case 800 by 480. And that's all. Clicking on the build button, our application is going to be built and deployed. me back again. Okay, this is a, a quick uh, uh, example of how to prepare a sample application in Qt. And this also close our live section. Let me remind you uh, our reference uh, uh, link, so our website, our sales email, our website uh, customer portal, the wiki, and uh, the GitHub repository will, uh, where you can find all of our software uh, free of charge, obviously. Uh, the next QT webinar will be based uh, mainly on QML and we will drive you through the um, uh, design of a QML application, uh, like a dashboard, where we, we will show how to uh, plug, let's say, all of the items in the graphic and uh, animate them according the uh, the hardware capabilities. And uh, this is close our uh, webinar, so feel free to start with the questions. Okay. I can read the auto cross compile and deploy Qt application on embedded Linux. So basically, you will are you are supposed to go through our um, uh, wiki that will drive you uh, step by step in the Qt configuration. You will be able to use also our uh, video on uh, the Parasite web channel uh, to go through the little items that uh, describe all of the single steps. And uh, once you have the Qt creator, you can start with any Qt sample reference that uh, can allow you to uh, even just uh, push the button and say hello world. Okay, uh, to use it commercially, do I need to purchase a commercial license? Uh, as I said, you are not supposed to buy a commercial license if you are allowed to go through a free license, but it depends on your own application. So uh, please read carefully what using the free license mean, and if not, go for the commercial license, but you are uh, uh, supposed to contact uh, the QT team for the, the details about this. Uh, and our question is, is a QT a QT commercial license required to use various size songs? The answer is no. We don't, our SOM and our Revolution Kit are open projects. Whatever you are using is public. We are not uh, uh, covering it by any additional license. So since we are not uh, 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 closing any part of the code, unless what we don't have at all, like the uh, library from uh, Vivante for the acceleration. Beyond this, 
all of these all of our software is public you can build the starting from the wiki you don't need to register anywhere you can just download the, uh, the source from the source code from the repository and build it so when you test our uh, boards with the qt uh, libraries you are not supposed to pay any license but if you're going to have your own product and you want to close your own machine you have to deal with the licenses in, in some way okay for the new design would you suggest sticking with yocto or go with the boot qt once again if you're focusing on qt i would suggest starting with boot to qt if you are not focusing specifically on qt maybe yocto is uh, more flexible but just reminded that uh, the version will be older so uh, as i said a couple of uh, release older uh, if uh, boot to qt provide uh, 515 in, Yocto, in the same version of yocto you will have 513 okay uh, how to configure qt creator when we use boot to qt the same basically uh, when if you go through our uh, uh, wiki you will find that uh, at one step uh, you will be requested to, to compile uh, the sdk for boot to qt and you're supposed to install the sdk for boot to qt once you go through the steps to configure uh, qt creator the steps are the same no matter the sdk you are using either the one from yocto or the one from uh, boot qt the steps are the same be careful because the path will be different because they are two different sdks so maybe the, the folders will not be named exactly the same but the logic will be the same you will have a specific uh, um, you will have a specific uh, gcc compiler g plus plus compiler a cmake a qt version or whatever okay uh, okay let me go on from new design how to come to creator this is done Okay, yes, uh, the, the, uh, I've received a question about uh, is a step-by-step -step tutorial available on uh, the website? Not exactly on the website, but on the wiki. We have a specific, uh, let's say, wiki website, not the, let's say, the, com, the, the front end, not, not varisite.com, but varywiki.com, where we collect all, the, all of the information and uh, we collect also the the customer reports about how to improve them or whatever uh, which amx series are supported by qt embedded all basically all uh, what is the different is mainly that uh, uh, some specific platform may provide some specific features if we are talking about the imx8 families all of them provide the gpus but for example, if you refer to the IMX6 UL or the IMX7, there is no GPU in those system on chip. And so you will use uh, basically the what is called the, the, the Linux frame buffer QPA. And never mind, you will be still able to use QML using a, a very efficient rendering engine. Okay. Uh, let me check for other questions. Okay. So, uh, can an application go full screen uh, using QT? Absolutely, yes. Uh, you will have to deal with the settings within the application. But there's no problem at all. QT application may run either in Windows or in a full screen mode. And uh, even in Wayland, when, where uh, some people uh, complained in the past about the presence of a, a bar on top, you can even customize the presence or not of the bar and remove it. Everything is customizable. Uh, can I run my application a startup? Absolutely, yes. 
just remind that uh, uh, your application can be seen as a service and uh, you are able to run uh, whatever service you want uh, in the Linux system. Uh, the same for BootUGT. Uh, BootUGT provides its own system to run uh, application startup that you can use or rather not, up to you. But from a general Linux perspective, whenever you want to run a, an application in the startup, um, you will be able to write your own custom service and run the application when the system boot. Uh, do you get, do we get the recording? Yeah, the, this uh, webinar will be recorded and it will be available. Both the presentation and the webinar will be available. The presentation in PDF format, uh, the webinar in a kind of video format will be able from our website uh, and uh, you can download the free of charge, of course. Okay. Any further question? Thanks, Peter. It looks like uh, we're done. Just wanted to stress that uh, following uh, this uh, webinar, you will get a, a link to everything that was related and presented here, including also a discount coupon for uh, kits uh, from various site web stores. So you can actually use that if you wish to move forward and procure uh, the kits uh, from uh, from various sites. So thanks uh, everybody for uh, for your time and uh, Pierre, uh, thank you very much for everything. Have a good day and stay safe.